guys. What's going on? Now, I figured since I had to saddle you all with the narcissist video, should have gone on the other channel. Um, the least I could do is tell you about the time I almost dated a narcissist. Okay, so let's go into story time. <laughs> this thing on TikTok that says, if you want to meet a man, the best place to go is Home Depot. If you're looking for a corporate type, then go on the weekends. If you're looking for a, uh, um, what's the word I want to say? A laborer type, then you go after sense during the week. And if you're looking for the boss man who owns the construction company or whatever, then you go between the hours of 6 and 8 a.m. And I think that's pretty accurate, you know, because I met this guy at Home Depot. I actually had an estimate, but I didn't have on my monogrammed shirt that I wear to estimates because it was hot and I didn't want to get it all sweaty. But we needed some things at a manufacturing uh, customer that we had, and I needed to pick them up real quick. But I still, you know, had on some nice pants and some nice little shoes and a, a cute top. <clears throat> so I met him in Home Depot and we started talking. And he said to me, we should go get a cup of coffee. Now, I don't see where there's anything wrong with that. But as it was, I had an estimate. So I didn't really have time for that. The problem I had with this whole interaction is that he almost did not want to take me out for an answer. And I said, I cannot stand up a client. And then he asked me, well, what business are you in? And I said, I own a cleaning service. And he said, really? I own a janitorial service. And he said, what's the name of your business? And I told him, and the end of it is wife. And he goes, well, you know what? I could be husband. I mean, it was cute. You know, it, it was cute. And he goes, well, okay. He goes, well, what about tomorrow? And I said, well, actually, if, if you want to have a cup of coffee or some lunch or something, I can do it tomorrow about one o'clock. So that's what we agreed on. Now, I did not exchange phone numbers at that point. And my feeling is either he was going to show up or he wasn't. But either way, I was going to eat because we picked Ruby Tuesdays. And at that time, they had a really great set. Well, you know, Ruby Tuesdays is out of business now, at least in, in my area. But no, I, I was okay to eat there whether I had, you know, company or not. So we meet and he shows up. And, you know, we talk about, you know, being two people in the cleaning business. And he asked me a question. He said, can I ask you some advice? Because it's something I don't know how to handle. And I said, fine, what is it? And he goes, I have an employee who does the night shift at one of our manufacturing clients. Um, but he comes in a little early before all the office staff leaves and they say that he smells bad and I'm not really sure what to do about it. Now, I know this sounds weird, but I just couldn't imagine owning a cleaning service and not knowing how to handle a situation like that. And deep down inside of me, for some reason, I almost felt like it was a backhanded slap at me. And I'm thinking to myself, well, why would he do that? He owns a cleaning service too, you know? So, you know, I'm like, well, did you, does he have a job before he gets to your job? He goes, well, I don't know. Well, you know, I can't even imagine not knowing that information. I said, well, you probably need to ask him because if he has, and your job is only what, three hours, four hours? He goes, it's, it's four hours. I said, okay. So he probably has a real job and the, and the job he does for you is, is extra money. I said, so he probably has a job. I would just ask him if he has another job before he gets to you. And depending on what that answer is, you take it from there. And, you know, I would, if he said yes, then I would probably say, well, what do you do? 
And if he mentions something that sounds like he physically exerts himself, then yeah, he probably gets a little sweaty at the first job and then comes straight to the second job. And that's a real easy fix. Just say, look, you need to freshen up a little bit before you get to the job or don't come in, you know, until everybody's gone because you know those office ladies, you know, they, 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 they sensitive. That's how I would have handled it. And if he said he didn't have a job before that, before he came to the, the uh, second job, then I would just say you probably need to freshen up because, see, only he knows whether or not he hired somebody who didn't look fresh, you know, and that would be on him. But this is a real easy thing to do. You know, if you're in the business of professional cleaning, well, you know, it's just just something you instinctively know how to handle. So I was really surprised he acted like he didn't know how to handle it. I almost got the impression that he was so above it that he just didn't know how, he didn't know what to do about it. Now he did tell me that he had a job in the city and he owned the cleaning service on the side and he had people do the work. Well, that's possible. But it was just, just something bothered me. So, you know, the rest of the, the lunch went well. And he said, would you like to go to the movies? And I said, well, no, I can't. Um, I actually need to go check on some properties. I said, but if you want to do it another evening, you tell me what day you're free. And I will let you know when I'm free and we can work it out. And so, again, he was a little upset because I couldn't say Yes, but my feeling is this. I own a small business. You got a job and own a small business. Why you got all this time? You know? So, you know, we agreed that we would do it two days later. I actually lived about five minutes from the movie theater. And I said, well, you know what? Why don't you just pick me up? I wanted to give my card to my daughter because she actually worked at the movie theater. She got a job there during the summer when she came home from um, college. And her and her best friend got a job together. Well, you know how that went. They both ended up getting fired together too because they stupid. But um, so yeah, I said, well, you know, go ahead and pick me up. Um, that way I, I can get my daughter the car and, and we're good. And you know, something went wrong. Well, the car is there if I need it, you know? So um, we agreed to do that. So my daughter is leaving the house to go to work. And he was supposed to pick me up at 6 p.m. And then we're gonna have a quick bite and then go to an eight o'clock movie. Seven o'clock and that man's not there. My daughter has to be to work at 7.30. So, you know, she's getting to work and she goes, damn mom, you got stood up. I said, I know. So finally she's on her way out the house and he's pulling up and they kind of pass each other. I get a text from my daughter saying, Mom, I've seen him before, but I didn't answer it because now I'm dealing with this late-ass man. You know, and my feeling is why couldn't you call? You know, he had all kinds of reasons. Now, in my life, crazy things happen, okay? Crazy things happen. I, You know, if I had told you I would have called you, but my phone ran out of charge and my charger quit working, you better believe I was telling you the truth. Because those kinds of things happen to me. But they don't normally happen to other people. So I'm like, you know what? Okay. Fine. He goes, let's go to the matinee the next day. I said, fine. You know what? I'll meet you at the matinee the next day. My daughter calls me. And she goes, Mom, I told you I'd seen him somewhere before. Mom, he comes here all the time with different women. Mom, he's here now. I'm like, holy shit, you're kidding me. She goes, no, Mom, he's here. And I said, you know what? Thanks, honey. You know, I will handle it. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, I'm still going to show up, you know, at the movie theater for the matinee, but we're going to have a conversation. So I show up. And I just say to him, you know, my daughter works at the movie theater and she saw you there last night with someone else. This man, he didn't blink. 
He didn't look surprised. He didn't look ashamed. What he did was say to me, why would your daughter tell you something that would hurt me? I didn't even know how to answer that question. I absolutely did not know how to answer that question. Now, at the time, I didn't know anything about narcissists. Very rarely did I run into somebody who was just a dick. But this man was a dick. And I said, well, I don't think she was trying to hurt me. I think she was trying to, you know, give me a heads up and warn me. He goes, well, you know, I just don't understand what he could try to hurt me. And said, are you sure the two of you have a really good relationship? And it was at that point, because see, now you're doubting my daughter. And I, at that point, I just said, you know what? Fuck it. And I got back in my car. And then I said, if you ever show up in my house, I will blow your fucking car up. Because now I know where it is all the time. And that was that. But yeah, that could have ended so badly. I mean, this way it didn't end too badly. But imagine if my daughter had recognized him and gave me a heads up. Who knows? Because he was charming. But then again, there was something about him and the, and the questions he asked. I really felt like he was trying to degrade me on the low. And so did he really own a cleaning service? Who knows? But I dodged the bullet. So that was, after that happened, anytime my spidey senses start to tingle, I take it as a warning. Maybe I don't know what's wrong, but I know there's something wrong. So that's my story about almost dating a narcissist. Um, there's another video coming up uh, about, I don't even know, but there's another video coming up. You all take care. Stay blessed. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.